Let's take it up a notch, shall we? At first blush, this might look like a very similar problem, and it is, but it's more your typical problem than we just worked. So in this case, what mass of oxygen, so I find oxygen, I put question mark grams, what mass of oxygen must be needed to react with 0 0.30 grams of magnesium? 0 0.30 grams. Now, the big difference between the problem we just worked um, and this problem is notice that we have grams of magnesium instead of moles, and we want to go to grams of O2 instead of moles of O2. So let's kind of think through what that looks like. So we can use those coefficient, like the coefficient from the magnesium is 2, the coefficient in front of the oxygen is 1, stoichiometric coefficient. We can use that to make a ratio to go from moles of magnesium to moles of oxygen like we did before, but we cannot use those stoichiometric um, coefficients to make a ratio to go directly from grams of magnesium to grams of oxygen. Instead, and it kind of takes on this pattern if you're into patterns, this is more of a typical stoichiometric calculation, stoichiometry, stoichiometry calculation, um, where you're going from grams of magnesium all the way to grams of oxygen. So I mentioned the, the thing we did before is kind of the heart part of it. Well, on the front, what I call the front end, we're going to go from grams of magnesium to moles of magnesium using something we've talked about actually for atoms back in Unit 2. We said if you know the molar mass of magnesium from the periodic table, you can do that. You can get from grams of magnesium to moles of magnesium. Now, early on, or just a few, few slides ago, we said if you know moles of magnesium, you can get to moles of oxygen using the balanced equation, the coefficients in the balanced equation using a ratio. So that's what I call the heart. And that's the kind of problems we did before. Okay. Well, once you have moles of magnesium to get all the way to grams, once you have moles of oxygen, sorry, to get then to mole to grams of oxygen, you're going to have to use the molar mass of oxygen. And in part three, we talked about how you're going to have to come up with the molar mass of O2 using the periodic table, taking two times the decimal number of for oxygen, and that's going to be the molar mass. I'm going to show you what this looks like, but do you see where we have kind of this middle part where that's the heart part, that's the stoichiometric ratio, but I call it, you have something on the front end, the molar mass on the front end, molar mass on the back end, okay? So let's see what this looks like. Oh, so a lot of times what I'll do, since I need a pair of molar masses, is kind of knock those out before I start my problem. Makes sense, right? So the molar mass for the elements, all we had to do was look at the periodic table. Okay, the molar mass for um, a molecule like oxygen, we had to take two times the decimal number for one oxygen, since it's O2. Now remember, and I'm not going to, how do I say this? Um, you're going to need to unpack that, just like we talked about in Unit 2, and that means 24.31 grams magnesium for one mole of magnesium. Okay? This right here, what does that really mean? 32.00 grams of O2 per one mole of O2. You know, if I was, um, you know, new to this or if I'm doing an answer key, sometimes, I mean, that's the way I write it out. That's the way I'm ready to use it then as what we call a conversion factor in my problem. Okay. Um... Here is one more uh, molar mass to knock out because we're going to have a follow-up question here in a minute and we will need it. So the molar mass of magnesium oxide, we have to consider the magnesium, consider the oxygen, add them together. And remember that that's what, 40.31 grams of MgO per one mole of MgO. All right? Okay. So... I like just to kind of string, when I say string, all the terms up. So the first term is going to be the mass of magnesium. The point, I usually put it over 1, so 0.30 grams mg over 1. 
Now it's important that we label everything because actually we're going to have in this problem we're going to have both magnesium and we're going to have O2 that's kind of floating around as two reactants in our problem. So now I'm going to use the molar mass of magnesium to get grams to cancel. What does that term look like? Well, if we use what I call the flipped version of the molar mass, then grams of magnesium will cancel. We'll be left with moles of magnesium. Now we're ready for the heart of the calculation to go from moles of magnesium to moles of O2. Okay, what does that look like? Well, since I want moles of magnesium to cancel, those units are going to go on the bottom, and I'm going to drag along the stoichiometric coefficient of 2, 2 moles of magnesium from the balanced equation, in the top, I'm going to put one, one mole of oxygen. Okay, so at this point, unit-wise, um, everything's canceled except for moles of O2. Now, look at the slide before. Now I'm going to use the molar mass of O2 to go from moles of O2 to grams of O2. What does that look like? Well, it's going to be the unflipped version, the normal version, of o molar mass of O2. That's simply 32.00 grams of O2 over one mole of O2. Moles of O2 cancel. The only units I have left are grams of O2, which is exactly where I want to be. So I'm going to round this according to significant figures. How many significant figures am I allowed? I'm allowed two significant figures based upon these two significant figures right here. And I show two significant figures by writing at 0 0.20 grams of O2. Phew, what do you think? So the, the, much of the rest of this part of lecture is just doing more examples. But I'm going to tell you, you can watch me do them until the cows come home, but till you do them on your own, it's not going to, it won't feel right. It won't make sense. So you're just going to have to do them after you watch me do them. So let's have a follow-up question, and the follow-up question um, is going to look like this. So sometimes you have to read questions a few times. Let's see, what mass of magnesium oxide is produced? So magnesium oxide, question mark grams, um, it, when you have 0 0.30 grams of magnesium. Find magnesium, 0 0.30 grams, okay? So does this make sense that... In this case, I'm going to go from grams of magnesium, and I want to go all the way to grams of magnesium oxide. How can I go from grams of magnesium to moles of magnesium? Using the molar mass. Molar mass of magnesium. I love that. And how can we go from moles of magnesium to moles of magnesium oxide? using the stoichiometric ratio. Very good. And then how can we go from moles of magnesium oxide to grams of magnesium oxide? Using the molar mass of magnesium oxide, which we conveniently have a few slides from ago. So let's line them up. Here we go. The first term is going to be that, that grams of magnesium, that 0 0.30 grams of magnesium over 1. What does the next term look like to go to moles of magnesium? Well, it's going to be the flipped version of the molar mass of magnesium. One mole of magnesium over 24.31 grams of magnesium. This is stuff we covered in Unit 2. So now we are left with units of moles of magnesium. Then how do we get to moles of O2? Using a stoichiometric ratio that looks like this. So we put moles of magnesium on the bottom, bring along the coefficient of 2 that's in front of the mg. We put moles of magnesium oxide in the numerator, bring along the coefficient of the 2 that goes along with the mgo. Very good. Now we need to go from moles of magnesium oxide to grams of magnesium oxide using its molar mass like this. 40.31 grams of mgo over one mole of MgO. Moles of MgO cancel. We're left with units of grams of MgO, which is perfect. Okay. Now, um, 
I, I bet you already know this, but you're going to have to show the molar mass calculation. You have to show how you got that earlier on in the problem like we did. Okay, so how are we going to round this problem to how many sig figs? I'm liking two sig figs because of the two sig figs over here in the mass of the magnesium you started with. Two sig figs, two sig figs. Okay. Phew. Now this problem was a little unique in that um, we kind of did this problem, right? Does that seem right? And earlier we did a problem going from 0 0.30 grams of magnesium. We decided you need 0 0.20 grams of oxygen to react with it. And do you see something kind of interesting between these two masses, the mass, the total mass of the reactants and the total mass of the products? Okay, according to the way the universe works, mass needs to be conserved, and this mass is conserved. So, um, it is. Sometimes uh, students will say, well, Mrs. Snipes, did we really have to do that last problem? Couldn't we have gotten it by difference? And, and the answer is yes. On a test, I won't put you in that situation, but, uh, uh, but yes, you could.